10 observations about the 100 top consumer AI apps. Welcome back to the AI Daily Brief. One of the things that Andreessen Horowitz does every six months or so is they catalog the top 100 generative AI consumer apps. They look at the top 50 web products by unique monthly visits and the top 50 mobile apps by monthly active users. Now that we're on our third edition, we're starting to get the ability to compare a little bit over time. And so today what we're going to do is discuss 10 observations coming out of this list. The first one, which is fairly overwhelming, is that creative uses continue to drive AI adoption. So many of these applications are about people creating images, videos, songs. There is a clear core adoption experience that these numbers seem to bear out. Second observation, there are some categories that seem to be on the come up. First of all, overall, almost a quarter of these companies were new, showing that this is hardly a fixed list at this stage of development. But within both the new companies as well as the biggest movers on the list, there are some interesting themes. Music got a major upgrade this time. Udio came in on the list at the first time at number 33. That's on the web list. And Udio's big competitor, Suno, jumped from 36 on the web-based list previously to number 5 this time around. That means the only platforms ahead of Suno were Claude Perplexity, Character.ai, and ChatGPT. I think that one of the things that this shows is that a big constraint on this list is how good the capabilities of different models are. Music generation just wasn't that good before Udio and Suno's latest additions, and so now that things have gotten so much better, it's not surprising to see them moving up the ranks. However, it's not just music where we see this. The same phenomenon is also clear for video that saw both new entrants like Luma and Viggle, as well as some additional big movers as well. Basically, the lesson here is, as the capability of a particular type of generation increases, so too does its usage by consumers. Wild, I know. Third in our observations... Perplexity continues to show momentum. And what's more, Perplexity now edges out ChatGPT when it comes to visit duration. The average session on Perplexity's website is over seven minutes. Perplexity also saw more significant growth over the last quarter, although it is not the biggest grower among the top five. That prize goes to our number four observation, that Anthropic's Claude is making up ground against its main competitor, ChatGPT. Over the last quarter, Claude, of course, introduced some new features, including their Artifacts UI, which has made a huge difference in how people interact with the service. And it also introduced a model, Claude 3.5 Sonnet, which for a time became more popular than GPT-4.0, although recently that started to switch again. In any case, from what once appeared to be a clear inevitable dominance by ChatGPT, Claude is definitely still staying in this race. Speaking of people staying in or getting into the race, TikTok parent ByteDance is spending huge effort on generative AI and it's showing up here. It had three apps debut on this list. Those include a student platform in Goth, a bot builder in Coz, and a general AI assistant called Dubao. Dubao made both the web and the mobile list. ByteDance also has a photo and video editor, Hypic, and another mobile assistant called CC, meaning that ByteDance comprises six slots across the web and mobile list. Our number six observation, the one new category that shows up here might be terrifying. Andreessen Horowitz called this category aesthetics and dating. Three products from the mobile list all fell under this category, LooksMax AI, UMAX, and Riz. I'm just going to pause here for a moment for you to start to imagine what those might mean given the category of aesthetics and dating and the names like LooksMax and Riz. Pretty much they are exactly what you might expect. A16Z writes, LooksMax and UMAX ingest photos of the user, rate them, and give tips to become more attractive. UMAX also generates pictures of what the user would look like as a 10 out of 10, while LooksMax analyzes the user's voice for attractiveness. Riz is a tool for improving dating app messages, giving users the ability to upload a conversation screenshot and get suggestions on what to say. I will leave it to you to decide if these things represent truly the end of civilization as we know it. Number seven observation. As much as the top of these lists are dominated by the ChatGPTs of the world, they also show that there's a lot of room still for more specialized applications. A huge number of these tools are effectively a single use case of something like ChatGPT or MidJourney, but turned into an entire app experience. There are very divergent theories about the long term for these types of companies. Some people think they will inevitably be eaten up by the big models, while others think that the focus on a very specific use case, especially as state-of-the-art models become commoditized, could lead to long-term product success. Of course, we don't know that, but what we do know for now is that there is still a market for them at this time. Observation number eight, although this is the consumer list, there is definitely some sneaky work usage showing up here. First of all, the top of the list is dominated by tools that, while being used for consumer experiences, are also heavily used for work experience like ChatGPT, Perplexity, and Claude. Second, if you look a little bit deeper, 
There are lots of tools that, while not explicitly an enterprise tool, still have a ton of, if not their primary usage in the business world. Take, for example, Gamma AI, which is a way to build websites, presentations, and documents from a single prompt, or Veed.io, which is heavily used by social media departments to create better social video content. Now, one of the interesting things at this stage is that a lot of individual users who are the ones who are bringing AI into work are also cutting their teeth on these social experiences and consumer experiences as well. Ninth observation, and this one comes directly from A16Z itself, Discord is perhaps unsurprisingly a leading indicator for apps that will go on to be successful. A16Z notes that in July, there were 10 AI companies that ranked in the top 100 of all Discord servers by invite traffic. That included Midjourney, Viggle, Domo, Pika, Blue Willow, Firefly, OpenArt, Hydra, Kria, and more. I'll be interested to see how this changes next time now that Midjourney has moved entirely to the web. Lastly, 10th observation, there is still a heck of a lot of randomness in here. The thing that this reminds me of is the early days of Facebook apps or the iOS app store when people were really just getting their feet wet and experimenting with a million different types of lightweight specific apps to see what worked. I think that if you come back a year from now, these lists will look extraordinarily different and indeed that many of these applications themselves might be doing different things by then. However, for now, this is the snapshot of what is popular at the moment and there is a lot to be learned from it. That, however, is going to do it for today's AI Daily Brief. Appreciate you listening or watching as always. And until next time, peace.